Good afternoon, everybody. These spaces here. Uh, I want to mention today that uh, this is not a funeral, but this is a celebration of life. Judy knew Jesus as her Lord and Savior, and she's celebrating with him right now. So this is a celebration of life, a life that God had granted us to be able to share, to know, and uh, we know that she is in the presence of God celebrating, yet this doesn't make things here on earth that much easier. We will miss her unique qualities, uh, her kindness, her gentleness, her laughter. Uh, but as a reminder today, this is not goodbye, but for those that know Christ, we will see her again. Amen. And so we are celebrating her life as she is with Jesus right now. And um, I'm going to open up the service. And for those that know, don't know me, I'm Pastor Ben. I'm the, the uh, pastor of the church here. Um, but would you bow your heads and pray with me today as we pray for the family, as we pray for one another, that God would just bring peace and comfort like only he can do. The Bible talks about that there's a peace that is there that passes all understanding. It, is when, it means when uh, things are even going bad in our lives, there's still a peace that we can receive from Christ um, that is from him. So let's grab a hold of that today. Dearly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now in your mighty name, Jesus. Lord, I just pray, Lord God, that you would bring peace, that you bring comfort. Lord, that you would minister to each and every life that is here. Lord, I pray, God, that you would speak to us. I pray, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, that we would just be reminded, Lord Jesus, of Judy is with you right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for her life. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can say, Lord, we don't have to speak about her past tense because, Lord, she is still alive and she's still well with you. Yes. And, Lord Jesus, so I pray, God, that you comfort every heart, that you comfort every soul. And, Lord, I pray for the family right now. I pray that you bring peace into their hearts and their lives. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would, Lord, that peace that passes all understanding, Lord, that you would minister to them, that you would strengthen them, and that you'd encourage them. Once again, I pray a special touch and blessing upon each and every one. Lord, we thank you, God. We love you, Lord. And we just give you praise, Lord God, today. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, Stacy, would you come? Judy was born August 9th, 1953, and she passed on September 7th, 2021. Judy was a mother, a grandma, a sister and friend, and she been, went to be with Jesus September 7th with her daughters by her side. Judy was raised in the Valley, and she worked for Twin City Foods and ConAgra in Prosser for over 25 years. Judy loved to bake, and her specialty was her divinity candy, which everyone loved. She loved to travel, in which she enjoyed many trips to Seattle, and one of her favorite destinations was the Oregon coast at Seaside. She loved spending time there with her grandson, Isaiah. He was the apple of her eye. Her best friends were her two daughters, Holly and Dawn. Judy is survived by her daughter, Dawn, of Tucson, Arizona, daughter, Holly, of Prosser, sister and brothers, nieces and nephews, and many great friends, specifically her cousin Dixie, who meant so much to her. She was preceded in death by her father and mother, Richard and Mickey, her sister Faye and her brother Joe. The family would like to thank the local EMS, hospice, and other caregivers that took care of Judy throughout her illness. Special thanks to Pastor Ben, Julie Bishop, and the church families. Judy had a saying that we will never forget. By ambulance or car, don't forget my shoes. At this time, we're going to sing unto the Lord and praise the Lord. So, Daryl, would you please come? And uh, we're going to uh, do one of the things that Judy loved to do, and that was to worship the Lord. I haven't played in this church, this guitar, since 1990. It's been a long time. <clears throat> this is another good song I'll be at home <clears throat> and we haven't practiced in 
until this morning. That's my brother Alan and sister Millis used to pastor here. They were our pastors for five and a half years here. <clears throat> so we got together. I said, they want me to sing. Would you come and help me? And she said, yes. Well, I fell upon my knees one day and repented of my sins. By faith I opened up my heart and I let the Savior in. He blotted out my sinful past, claimed me for his own. He's coming back for me someday and then I'll be at home.
I think it'd be appropriate, um, as we, this is a celebration of life, that we just give the Lord a hand, a Lord a hand of praise. And we just do that just to thank him. I know Judy would be. I've seen her clapping her hands all the time in church. And um, as we were getting ready for, uh, for this ceremony, um, we're talking and going over a few things. And uh, one of the things I was making sure, as I always do, if there's a time that, um, that we kind of need to move on in the service, that you know, I kind of look at the family and look at some cues from the family telling me, okay, it's time to move on. And, uh, and I mentioned a couple others, and uh, Patty mentioned, and said, I I'll be signaling to you if you go too long. And I'm like, okay, but I'm going to be looking, uh, looking towards you th today. But as I'm just going to share just a little bit today. And we know where Judy is. She's in the presence of God. She's with Jesus, being absent from this body she is present with the Lord, and I'm going to be talking just a little bit about that just for a few minutes. I'm going to just read a portion of scripture here from 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8. I'm going to talk a little, just a little bit about it because I really, in times like this, it's really a time that we can readjust and think about where we are in our own hearts and in our own lives. When things like this happen, that we get this uh, sense and understanding that life is short, that this life on this earth will eventually come to an end. When we're younger, uh, we have a tendency to think that we will live forever and that we're invincible and that, uh, that everything will just continue to go and continue to move on. But with wisdom and those that, that are, are, have gotten older and getting closer and closer to that time, there's a realization that comes uh, when, when that happens that time is shorter and that I need to make the most of the time that I have. The time that I'm here on this earth, I realize I don't have eternity here on this earth. And so there's an understanding that we have and that we get when we, and especially in situations like this, that Time is short, and we need to make sure that our hearts are right, but also our relationships with each other, with each other are right and are good. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8, it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared for us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are not absent from the Lord, or we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And one of the first things, one of the first points I want to make this morning is when Paul talked about this tent. A tent is something that, a tent is not a house. A house is permanent. A tent is temporary. And when he talks about our body being a tent, it means that this body here on this earth, this tent is not forever. This is not our forever home, but this tent is temporary. Anybody ever been camping before? You put up a tent, you go, you leave your house, you leave from where you are, and you build this temporary habitation where you're going to stay, that you're going to be sheltered, that you're going to be in. And this tent that when, when Paul talked about is a temporary, is a temporal place. This tent, it says, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The scripture gives us a lot right here, but it's talking about people who know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There is a hope that is given. If this body is destroyed, we have a heavenly body that is eternal, that we will be in the presence of God forever. For the believer, this is not the end of life. That true life, everlasting life, continues, gets better, and is never ending. 
that death has no power over the blood-washed, redeemed child of God. As we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. But it also shows us that life on this earth, as we know it, will end at some point. Now, for the Christian, we have a great hope. For the unbeliever, they don't share in the same hope. When one passes, it is a reminder that this time is short. And I don't know about you, but as, as, as living in this life and seeing and having relationships, and I, I'm not very old, but as I'm getting older, I've seen a lot more people that I've known that have gone from this world and have passed, and they are no longer with us. It is a reminder that we need to make sure that our hearts and our lives are right with God. If we are here on this earth, it is times like this that we would call wake-up calls. They are reminders. And I don't know about you, but I have never been a, a fan of alarm clocks. I remember when I was growing up and getting ready for school, I had one of those 80s alarm clocks. And I know some people still have the same alarm, alarm clock. And it would make this horrible sound, and it would just, it would drive you crazy. But the point for that alarm clock was to wake you up, to get you out from where you were, and, and to get you going to where you could be where you need to be. And things like this, is, it's the same type of pattern, the same type of thing that times like this is like an alarm clock. It is a wake-up call. It is a time to realize that we need to get up, and we need to get going, and we need to realize that we need to be on the move. I remember one of, my, one of the times that I woke up and my alarm clock was missing. It was gone. And I couldn't figure out where it went. But sometime, at some point, I woke up in the middle or whenever it went off, and I, and I literally threw it across the room because it was broken. It was across the room. I don't know if my parents knew that or not, but it was a broken alarm clock. And sometimes I think that we're like that in this life. That we, these things and these times that we have, instead of, instead of uh, listening to the warning or the time to get up, because I have missed the alarm clock for work and for different things, and I was very regretful for those times and thankful when I was woken up. Sometimes it's too late. Sometimes I missed, I missed it and didn't even realize it. But I want to say today, times like this are times of wake-up call. It's a time to realize. James 4, 4, 13 through 15 says, Now come you who say today or tomorrow we will do, go to such and such a, a city and spend a year there. Buy and sell and make a profit. Or else you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. Here is scripture that talks about those who live life and thinking that you have all the time in the world. But these are times and reminders. It is our alarm clock today. It is our wake up call today. Today is the day of salvation, making things right with God. Another point I want to make here to take advantage of the time that we have left with our loved ones. This is another thing to realize that when we are on this earth, when we are still here, and it saddens my heart because I know a lot of people that have not made things not only right with God, but made things right with each other. In the time that we have to make the best, make the best of it with each other, making things right, forgiving, forgiving one another. Moving forward, life gets better as we do this. Give that hug. Spend that extra time. Make things right. I don't know about you, but at, the, at times, at the end of, of life, I've talked to many people at the end of their life, and the things that they, have say, they say to me, I wish I would have spent more time with them or with my family. They don't say, I, I wish I would have worked harder. They don't say, I wish I would have did this or did that. They say that they wish they would have had more time with their family and their loved ones. Because time is short. And, and for all of us, we put things off. We always say we have tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next time I see them. We need to make sure things are right right now. 
Time, life is short, but eternity is forever. Jesus has made a way for us. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God sent his son to die in our place that we might live unto him. He took it upon himself what we deserved. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. And he is there always with his arms open wide to us. Now, part of this scripture, there's a guarantee that it says. It says in verse 5, Now he who has prepared for us this very thing is God. God has prepared this very thing for us, who has also given us the spirit of a guarantee. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if then children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. When you know Jesus Christ, when you know him as your Lord and Savior, you have a guarantee of your salvation that you will spend eternity with him. If we are led by the Spirit of God and we are sons and daughters of God, if we belong to Jesus, we will be with him. And this is what we know with with Judy. She is with him. I've had a lot of people say that, well, it's a for sure thing. Anybody here ever had someone say it is a for for sure thing? Anybody ever here ever been let down by somebody? I think at some point we've always, all of us have been let down at some point in our lives. And this happens. But I want to tell you today that the one who died for you will never let you down. He will never let you down. Things on this earth, things that you think are constant, things that you think that are for sure, we find out that they're not. Here in town, just and maybe, maybe some of you know this, but here in town I went to Burger King the other day, and you think that something that's a for sure thing at a place called Burger King, that they're going to have burgers? You want to know something? They didn't have any hamburgers. I said, that, something that you think is a for sure thing was not a for sure thing. But I want to tell you today that with Jesus, this guarantee that we have in him, as we know him, we turn our life to him, it is a for sure thing. The word of God is true. And the question is, are we going to be true to his word? Number three this, today, to be present with the Lord. Verse seven says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. Judy is in the presence of the Lord right now. This is a guarantee. She belonged to Jesus and she belongs to Jesus right now. And when, when the Bible talks about, when he, he, he says, when we see many times in Scripture when it says that uh, a saint has gone on to be with the Lord, it doesn't say that they died. It says that they're, they went asleep. Here with Jesus and in him, and as we belong to him, we do not die. Sin is death. And the question, do we know him? Do you know him? It is time to make things right. And it's time to realize that we do not have all the time in the world. And it's very simple. Very simple. Sometimes we make it so complicated. But to turn to Jesus is very simple. It's to turn to him and turn away from the things of the past and turn to Christ. To make things right. To repent. Ask for forgiveness. And he will help you. He will. Would you pray with me? Dear Holy Father, Lord, I thank you for who you are. And I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would not let another moment, another second go by, Lord Jesus, without making things right with you. Lord Jesus, you are the one who redeemed us. You are the one who saves us. You are the one who sets us free. And Lord, I pray that everybody that is here, Lord God, Lord, that their hearts, Lord Jesus, would be made right with you, even in this moment. Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for each and every life. Lord, you know right where they're at. And Lord, even some are speaking to you right now, and there's some wrestling that is going on even in their heart. Lord, there are some things that they've already closed the door. 
But Lord, I pray through your spirit, even right now, that you'd speak to every heart and speak to every life. I pray that they would know you for who you really are. Lord, not who they think that you are, but who you really are. Lord, I pray that you'd minister to them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I look to you. Lord, I turn my heart to you. Lord, and I pray each and every one that is here, Lord God. Lord, I, I ask for forgiveness for my sins, Lord Jesus. And I pray that those that are here would do the same and look towards you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You have made a difference in my life, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you for that. So Lord, I pray. Lord, even in this moment as we're praying right now, that each of us would make our lives right with you. Turn to you wholeheartedly. And Lord, also, Lord, as we do this, I pray, Lord God, Lord, that you would help us to make things right with others, with our family members, with those that maybe we even call our enemies that were once even our friends. Lord, I pray that there would be restoration. I pray that there would be healing. And I pray, Lord God, that you would be glorified. Lord, we turn our hearts and lives to you. And Lord, I thank you for who you are. And I thank you that you are always there and we can always turn to you. Lord Jesus, touch every heart that is here today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I wasn't looking at Patty, so I don't know. Uh, you guys might have been looking. <laughs> We're going to move to the next portion of this. And what uh, we are going to uh, take a time um, for memories. And we will bring a mic to you uh, where you're at. But if you have something to share, be, this is one of the greatest opportunities that we have in a, uh, a time like this because not every single person has had the same experiences. Not every single person knows every, uh, everything that has happened, but this helps us to get to know Judy better and who she is. And, and so I want to uh, take this, this time and this opportunity um, to open it up uh, for, uh, for memories today. And um, I, 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 so by the, raise of, the raised hand, um, we'll go ahead and take, uh, take some time here. Not everybody at once. There's always got to be the person that breaks the ice. There's got to be the person that breaks the ice. Character building. <laughs> Character building. And on some of these, I'm just going to, I'm not going to look at Patty because I want to hear all these stories. I want to hear all of them. Anybody else? Well, Judy was one of my oldest friends. And I've told this story a lot of times, but I remember the first day she came to church. We were over there in the old church. And that day, she liked me immediately, and she gave me her offering. And I took it and spent it after church. <laughs> you just share. Sometimes it's just as simple as saying, uh, I'm going to miss her. She was a good friend. It's somebody I loved. And that's good for us to be able to say that too. Anybody else? <laughs> a few months ago, we were headed to the Tri Cities with Judy. And anyway, that she was having um, problems. And anyway, so 
<laughs> on the side of me while I was driving, I um, noticed that there was four cops and they would slow up, they would go, and I thought, don't mean nothing to me, I'm gonna <laughs> pass you, whatever. And anyway, I had my lights on and I started speeding up. Well, about that time, their lights came on and I said, Holly, <laughs> call 911 and tell them what's going on. And she said, yeah, we've got calls on you. Pull over. <laughs> and so I pulled over and they ran up to the car and everything. And anyway, they said, it's a good thing you stopped because there's already, um, there's already um, strips already on the road for you. <laughs> and anyway, I said, okay. So as they went, they was going to grab Isaiah, and I said, no, that's the wrong person. It's this one. And they said, oh, well, he's the one that's asleep and everything. And I said, yeah. But I said, it's my sister that she needs help. And anyway, so they loaded her up. As they loaded her up, I got my lecture. Who told you you could drive that fast? And I said, well, you tell me. If you have a loved one or a friend or someone in your vehicle and something's going on, don't tell me that. Sorry about this. Don't tell me that um, you went in speed either. And he went on and on and on. And to make a long story short, he says, Now remember the next time, don't speed. And I said, Okay, sir, but tell me that you won't speed either. And he didn't know what to say, and I said, well, I'm not going to promise you because I don't know what will happen next. At least you didn't lie. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, here I told her, I was like, they're going to have you sign papers to keep you for 100 days. I was like, if you don't want to stay, don't sign. Because I wasn't going to sign and say, no, that we're taking her home. So I was like, you have to do it if you don't want to stay. Well, here she, she called me and she was like, come get me. I'm ready. So here the office called and was like, she won't sign that she wants to come home. So here I went and got at her and she was like, well, what took you so long? I've been waiting for you to come pick me up. I was like, well, I was waiting to see if you would sign those papers. And after that, she knew if she went to the hospital, the only way to get me back because of this COVID is don't talk and don't answer no questions. And then they'll let me back there. So here the ambulances would always come to get her and they would start asking her her questions, all their questions, and she would just look at me. And so then I would look at them and I was like, I'll see you at the hospital. And here she, uh, she always knew though what she wanted and she always would say, don't forget my shoes. As we uh, get ready to close here, um, w would you come and could you lead us in a, 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 a congregational song? Or uh, I want to say she's going to be missed very much. I, one of the things I noticed, it always seemed like she had like, uh, when she smiled, it was always like she had a secret that she wasn't telling you. And I remember talking to her and saying some things, and sometimes it was serious, sometimes it wasn't, but she would always kind of smile, and I always never knew quite what she was thinking. Uh, but she's a very special lady, very special lady, very special lady. You know, I'd just like to say a few words. Uh, we passed her, Judy, here for about five and a half years, and she trusted me and would talk to me a lot. And... Um, she got married in this church. And I remember when Holly was born, we went up on the hill to see her and this cute little baby. And they were so thrilled with this little girl because Judy wanted a child so bad. And she was so happy. And she, and uh, you're just so beautiful. And I, and they, I think your birthday is at Christmas time, isn't it? The reason they named you Holly? No. But anyway, I'm just so glad to have been her, their pastors. And Judy is in a better place. Yes, she is. Oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place. When we all Get to heaven. What a day! What a day! Of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout victory, victory. Now while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will over spread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When, when we all get, get to heaven, what a day, day of rejoicing that will be. Sing that will be. When, we, when all we all see Jesus, oh, we, we will sing and, and we'll shout, shout the victory, the victory. victory. Then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toss of life repay. When we all get to get to heaven, what a day, a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all Shout victory, victory. victory. Now onward 
to the prize before us soon is beauty will behold and soon when those pearly gates will open we're gonna strut the streets of gold when we when all we Shout the victory. Now onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon those pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we when we all get to into heaven. What a day of rejoicing that. When we all see Jesus, oh, we, we will sing, sing and shout the victory, shout the victory. And everybody will be, will be rejoicing, will be happy over there. And we will shout and sing his blessing. Everybody will be happy over there. Now we Praise your name, Jesus. Glory.